Good morning, Deliverance Temple. So great to have you with us, those who are in the parking lot as well as those who are online. Good morning to you. Good to see you. At this time, we're going to transition into a worship song from Jocelyn Jimenez. So let's give a amen and get our hearts ready so that this song will prepare us for the word of God. He's making ways in the wilderness. He 
making rivers in the desert. He's making waves in the wilderness. He's making rivers in the desert. He's making waves in the wilderness. He's making rivers in the desert. He's making waves in the wilderness. He's making rivers in the desert. No more, no more dry ground. Heaven's open. 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 Heaven's open. Heaven's open, no more dry ground. Heaven's open, no more dry ground. Heaven's open, heaven's open, no more dry ground. Heaven's open, heaven's open, heaven's open. Draw from me, I will provide. Cause I might be empty, but he is the well. So draw from me, I will provide. I might be empty, but he is the well. I might be empty, but he is the well. I might be empty, but he is the well. So draw from me. Draw from me, I will provide. So draw from me, I will provide. So draw from me, I will provide. So draw from me, I will provide. Yes, he will. And what was barren is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. What was a barren season is giving birth right now. So sing, sing, oh barren land. This water is coming to the thirsty. And though you are empty, he is the way. So draw from him, he will provide. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that you give water to the weary and you give water to the thirsty. And we thank you. The Bible says, blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And God, I thank you that you're going to fill us on this morning in this preaching moment. So, God, I'm praying that you would hide me beneath the cross, that you would think through my mind. Speak through my mouth, God. Let it be all of you and less of me. And let the people be eternally touched and blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. With your Bibles in your hands, 
Just repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will have what it says I will have. I'm a part of Deliverance Temple where we love by living our vision every day. We connect with our creator continually. We confess our deliverance consistently. We commit to serve creatively and we communicate Christ's love compassionately. Amen. That's what we do. Now, say this with me. Pastor Andre, feed me this word. Come on, one more time. I, 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 can't, I can't hear you out there. Pastor Andre, feed me this word. Oh, amen. Come on, put your hands together out there. So we have been in a series that I didn't know was going to be a series. Lady Devon spoke something on the first Sunday of this month, and many people know that this month has been trying for Deliverance Temple, but she spoke a prophetic word that said, don't lose a focus. And in that, and in listening to her elaborate on that, and when it came time for me to carry out the rest of the month in preaching, that theme, that don't lose theme just never left me. And so the first one was, put it up again, the first one was, don't lose focus, and then we shifted into don't lose your fight. And so for today, it's going to have the same don't lose thing, but we want to put a scripture up first to walk through, and I do miss Mother Mitchell reading for us, but I will read. It says, but as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold. For I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For just a second, let me give you a little context. David was in a situation where he was struggling and he started looking at other people who were not living right, doing right, and they didn't seem to be struggling as hard as him. They didn't seem to be as sick as him. They didn't seem to go through the trials, obstacles, and trips that he went, at, that he goes through or went through. And so looking over there, many times the grass always looks greener on the other side. And so David made a statement, my foot almost slipped. I, I almost slipped back. I almost lost my step. I almost lost because I was looking at the prosperity of the wicked. But then what happened, and I won't go to it in the scripture. I'll just paraphrase for you. Basically, he remembered their end. He remembered how their life ended, and he made up in his mind, my foot does not need to be slipping. So with that understanding and with that introduction Let's take us to the title for today. The title for today is Don't Lose Your Footing. Come on, somebody say that. Don't lose your footing. Don't lose your footing. They're going to bring the title up on the screen, but don't lose your footing. And so with that understanding and connotation, let's look and give a definition for footing. It is a secure grip with one's feet, having a sure grip with your feet. David said, my feet almost slip, but when you don't lose your footing, you have a secure grip with your feet. Number two, the basis on which something is established or operates. In other words, the foundational principles. Don't lose your foundational principles while you're in the fight trying to keep your focus. Don't lose your footing. Don't lose the basis on which you are standing. And number three, the bottommost part of a foundation wall. In other words, it is the very thing that anchors you. 
So the older song used to say, make sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. So you don't want to lose your anchor in this moment. You don't want to lose your anchor in this season. You don't want to lose your footing. You don't want to slip now. You don't want to backslide now. You don't want to give up now. You don't want to change your religion now. You don't want to stop believing now. This is not the season to lose your focus, lose your fight, or lose your footing. Ah, Get a grip. Dig in. Set your face like a flint. Square your shoulders. Stand yourself up and get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of what you got to go and what you got to do. And stand firm and stand strong. Don't lose your focus. Don't lose your fight, your will to fight. And don't lose your footing. Because even if you're willing to fight, and you lose your footing, the enemy will get an advantage on you. So you need a secure grip. You need a sure foundation. You, you need to be standing on the solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Let me give you some footing synonyms. Foothold. Hold. Grip. Support. Secure position, steadiness, stability, balance, equilibrium, cornerstone. I'll do it again a little quicker. Foothold, hold, grip, support, secure position, steadiness, stability, balance, equilibrium, cornerstone. One more time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it again. You can keep the camera on me, but I'm going to do it one more time. Don't lose your foothold. Don't lose your hold. Don't lose your grip. Don't lose your support. Don't lose your secure position. Don't lose your steadiness. Don't lose your stability. Don't lose your balance. Don't lose your equilibrium. Don't lose your cornerstone. This is the time to be sure of about what you're doing in life. This is not the time to be wishy-washy, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. This is the time to dig your heels in and say, with God, I'm going all the way. 99 and a half is not going to be able to do it. I'm locked in. I'm loaded. I, I'm standing on a sure foundation, and I'm moving forward. You make all things new, and I will follow you forward. But I'm digging in, and I'm standing firm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be breaking some of these points down as our main points. I can't do all of those synonyms. We'd be here too long. I'm going to break down some of those as our main points. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at that very last one, and that's going to be our point A, and that is your cornerstone. Your cornerstone. I'm telling you not to lose your footing and I'm telling you that a cornerstone is a part of the synonyms of footing. So I want you to understand what is your cornerstone. What is the thing you should be anchoring to? What should you be standing on? What should you be allowing to hold you up and stabilize you? What is your cornerstone? Let's look at Psalms 118, 17. I'll tell you even how I came here. This verse is what I've been confessing over my father's life as he's been laying in a hospital in Arizona. Psalms 118, 17 says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I'll read it again. I shall not die, but live and declare the the works of the Lord. That is the cornerstone scripture I've been standing on for my father. He shall live and not die. The next verse that I want to go to is verse 19. It says, open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. I want to, I want to read that one more time. Open to me. The gates, 
An open gate represents a way. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them. Being able to go through something represents a way. And I will praise the Lord. This brings me to subpoint under A, and it is this. Jesus is our cornerstone because Jesus is the way. Now, I didn't say Jesus is a way. I said Jesus is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, he is the gate that we enter the Father in. He's the gate that we enter heaven in. He's the gate that we receive joy. He's the gate where we get peace. He's the gate where we get prosperity. He's the gate where we get love. He, he's the gate where our faith comes from. So he is the way. He becomes our cornerstone. We anchor to him because he opens up the door access for the best parts of our life and here's the thing I can make it simpler than all that he's the way to eternal life everlasting life let's let's go further in that chapter let's look at verse 20 this is the gate of the Lord Jesus is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter we are righteous in him verse 21 I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. Let me talk about that just for a second. He answers us. See, he's the way. But even though he's the way, we have a lot of questions about our life. Life leaves us with a lot of questions. But as we come to him being the way and talking to him and praying with him, and as we say connecting with our creator continually, he answers us. And what he answers us, he answers us with salvation. And salvation is not just being born again, which is awesome, but it comes from the word soteria or sozo in the Greek, which means he's my healing, he's my preservation, he's my safety, he's my soundness, he, he's my prosperity, he's my rescuer, he's my deliverer. When I say he's my way, I'm saying he's everything that I need. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus Jesus is the way. He's my cornerstone. And being my cornerstone, he opens doors for me. He makes ways out of no ways. When I'm backed in a corner, he finds a way to pull me out. When I'm stuck in a pit, he finds a way to lift me up. When I'm dirty, he finds a way to clean me up. He finds a way to turn me around because he is my way because he is my cornerstone. Let's look at Verse 21, which we, we, we've already read. Let's go to verse 22. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. In building, they have a capstone, a capstone that, that anchors the foundation, but what we are celebrating about Jesus being our way, what we sometimes fail to understand that other people rejected him. But he was the cornerstone. Not everybody has the revelation to see he is the way. They're looking for all these other ways. But reason why we get happy is because while they're rejecting him, what the builders rejected, he's become our chief cornerstone. Yes, you got to turn to crack cocaine, but he becomes the thing that gets me high all night. He is my cornerstone. He is El El Yon, the most high God. He is Adonai, my Lord and Master. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Nissi, my banner. He is Jehovah Roi, my shepherd. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He is everything, but somebody rejected him. 
And it's talking contextually about the Jewish people who rejected him. But in this day and age, there's people who are still walking away from God and rejecting God. But we know better than that because the moment I reject God, I lose my footing all the way because he is my cornerstone. That which the builders rejected is the chief cornerstone. He is my everything. As long as I got King Jesus, I can make it in this life because he keeps me anchored amen let's let's look at point number two under this first heading of your cornerstone knowing our foundation is Jesus it bursts praise in us and brings prosperity and blessings to us I'm going to say it again knowing our foundation is Jesus, having that knowledge, having that revelation. We're not talking about head knowledge. We're talking about revelation. It bursts praise in us, and it brings prosperity and blessings to us. Let me prove it to you from the word of God. Psalms 118 and 23. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. I I didn't think I wanted him to be my cornerstone. I didn't think I wanted him to be my cornerstone. I didn't think I wanted him to be my cornerstone. But after I've seen what he's done in my life, I realize and I recognize that this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous. This is the best life I've ever lived. I'm so glad that I chose him. But here's the better truth. I'm so glad he chose me. Me. before the foundation of the world he chose me that I might know him and because of that it is marvelous in my eyes all the things that he's doing in my life and has yet to do my mind is being blown by his goodness let's read some more verse 24 that's why I say this is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. That means every day. That means every single day is a day of rejoicing. It is a day of joy. This is the day that I of the Lord. I'm going to rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. When you got fired this day, it's still the day the Lord has made. When you got stabbed in the back today, but this still is the day the Lord has made. And because I know he's my way and he's my cornerstone and he's got me anchored, I'm going to rejoice. I may not rejoice right away, but baby, I'm going to rejoice. You can't stop this praise because it's being birthed in me. And I may labor to push it out, but there's a praise down on the inside because I know who's got my back. I know who holds my future. I know who's standing beside me. I know who's in front of me. I know who's behind me. I know who's around me. I know who's above me. I know who's below me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? So this is the day that the Lord has made. I, 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 I will rejoice. I will praise. I I will put a smile on my face. I will laugh and I will have some joy because God is my anchor and Jesus is my cornerstone and because of that, there's a praise on the inside. But I said not just praise, it'll bring prosperity and blessing. Let's look at verse 25. 25 says, save now. I pray or deliver now, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Now, this is so powerful. Once you see that he is your cornerstone and you're anchored to him and praise begins to be birthed out of you, not only is praise birthed out of you, but declaration is birthed out of you. You begin to understand that life and death are in the power of the tongue. I'm going to use my tongue to praise him, but I'm also going to start speaking to situations. So the scripture says, save now. 
In other words, ah, there's some stuff I don't want to wait a long time for. Deliver me now. Fix it now. Work it now. Bring them out the hospital now. Turn it around now. And then the declaration says, sin now, prosperity. See, I have a right to call prosperity to come to me as long as he is my cornerstone and I'm anchored to him and I haven't lost my focus and lost my fight and lost my footing. I have a right to declare prosperity. Prosperity, come to me. Money, come to me now. Uh, uh, discounts, come to me now. Blessings, come to me now. Joy, come to me now. Cars and houses and clothes, whatever it is that I need, draw it in. I call it in. Loved ones save. I call it in. I'm able to speak prophetically once I know I'm anchored to the cornerstone. One more verse. 26, blessed is he, this is where the blessings come in, who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord because I'm anchored to the name of the Lord. I am blessed. Somebody just say that and type that in the comments. I am blessed. Let me come a little closer over here. Somebody just say, I am blessed. Blessed. I want to declare it over you. You are blessed in the parking lot. You are blessed because you are anchored to the cornerstone. Online, you are blessed because you're anchored to the cornerstone. Those who are watching the rebroadcast, you are blessed because you're anchored to this cornerstone, which is Jesus. That brings me to point B, which is your balance. Our footing is our cornerstone, but another synonym is it's our balance. So if Jesus is our cornerstone, Jesus also becomes our balance. Let's go to Matthew 14 and 28. Now, Lady Devin referenced this when she preached, so I'm just pick it, piggybacking off of what she shared. Matthew 14, 28. And Peter answered him. And said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. I want to demonstrate this for a minute. So Jesus is walking on the water. This is after he had fed the 5,000. And he sent the disciples and told them to go ahead and go to the other side, go on, go, and all of a sudden, he says he's staying back, but all of a sudden, they see something walking. And at first, they thought it was a ghost, and he says, it is I. He's just walking on the water. And Peter, with his boldness, he says, if it is you, tell me to come. Let's go back to the verse. Let's look at verse 28 again in the bottom part. If it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter was real bold. Let's look at verse 29. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. So paint that picture in your head. I know you've read that story a lot and heard it a lot. But just painting that picture that, first of all, you see something coming towards you and you think it's a spirit. And then you find out it is your leader. It is your master. And one person in the boat has the boldness to say, if it's you, command me to come out on this water. And he says, come on. I, I, I'm not sure who I'm talking to prophetically, but there's some stuff that you're getting ready to step out on too. And you don't know how you're going to make it, but I hear God saying, come on. I'm your balance. Come on. I'm your stabilization. Come on. I'm your cornerstone. Come on. I'm your footing. You won't lose your foothold. Come on. Step on out there. Yeah, it's a little scary. It's a little murky. Yes, I, I ain't got no business. I know the grammar's wrong, but I ain't 
got no business walking on water. I ain't got no business being this blessed. I, I ain't got no business starting this business, but I'm stepping out anyhow. I, I'm believing God anyhow. They told me I should be preparing for somebody's death, but I'm believing they're going to be healed. I'm stepping out anyhow, and I'm trusting the word of God. That leads me to subpoint number one under B. And here it is. Jesus' word gives us balance even in unbalanced situations. I'll say that again. Jesus' word gives us balance even in unbalanced situations. So I need you to understand and I need you to recognize and realize that we are in an unbalanced age. The moment 2020 decades showed up, everything has gone topsy-turvy. But God's word in an unbalanced situation brings you balance. And that's why you are not uh, as worried as everybody else is worried because you have this anchor in your soul. You've got this cornerstone and this cornerstone gives you balance. Let's continue to read. Let's look at Matthew 14, 30, the A clause that says, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. Oh, man, if you, if you can paint that picture in your mind and understand the fact that he stepped out there and he was doing good, but as Lady Devin said, he lost his focus. His focus went from Jesus to the waves. Here's the thing. The situation is unbalanced. Here is a scientific principle. When you leave from a solid and standing on a solid and step into a liquid, the liquid should consume you. When you step from your bathroom tile into the water in your tub, you should not be able to stand on top of the water. Your foot is supposed to go down. And so that is what should have happened, but that is not what happened. But when the winds begin to distract him, it brought him to the reality that I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing and it caused him to be afraid. But here's the thing he forgot. He was standing not on the water. He was standing on God's word. But fear and God's word does not mix. So let's look at point number two under B. The sub point two under B is this. Fear gets us off balance. Say it again. Fear gets us off balance. So, here is the truth. When you are standing on God's word, you're standing on God's faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But once you begin to look at the fear and lean toward the fear, it it messes with your balance. It, it throws you off balance because you can't mix fear and faith. They're like water and oil. They don't mix. And as long as you're on the word, you'll have faith. But as long as you start looking at fear, it's going to throw you off your balance. It's going to make you lose your footing. So I need you to understand, last week I told you the fight is about your faith. And this is what you need to understand. He's going to fight your faith with fear. Most people think the opposite of faith is doubt. Truthfully, the opposite of faith is fear. And once you get into fear, the result is doubt. But he's not trying to get you to doubt. He's trying to get you to Fear, because if he gets you to fear, he gets a buy one, get one free. Once you start fearing, you automatically will doubt, and then you're going to lose your balance. Let's look at 1430B. Just as I said, and beginning to sink. So the moment he looked at the waves 
and became afraid, he immediately began to sink. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Some of you who have been giving in to your fears right now, I just need you to cry out, Lord, save me. Remember the scripture we read previously that says, save now. Sin prosperity. See, once you understand who your cornerstone is, you realize even though I've got in an unbalanced situation, I'm still connected to the cornerstone and I still got something inside of me that I can holler out. And when you lose your balance because of fear, you're still close enough to the master to say, save me, Lord. Now, now, here's something that's very powerful that I need you to understand. Let me, let, let, let me come a little closer. Look you, look you right in your, your eyeballs. Those in the parking lot, I can't, can't quite see your eyeballs, but I'm looking at the TV people, and let me look at you real, 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 real good and, and look at you and get you to see this. Peter messed up, and he began to sink. But guess what? When Peter cried out, and when Peter stepped out, he was closer to Jesus than the folk that stayed in the boat. See, when you step out, sometimes you make some mistakes. And sometimes you fall. When you start going after the blessings you think God wants you to have, the devil throw everything but the kit, everything but the kitchen sink at you. Everything and the kitchen sink, the pot, the stove, the kettle, the fireplace, he throw everything at you possible. Throws everything possible he can at you. I mean, he chunks it all at you. But you're still closer than the folk who's sitting back doing nothing. Yeah, 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 you started to sink. Yeah, you feared, but you're still closer than the folk who wouldn't do anything. So I would rather step out and lose my footing a little and regain my footing because I cry out to the master than to be somebody who's going to sit somewhere sucking their thumb and having a pity party. I don't have a time to have a pity party. I'm believing and trusting God and I'm stepping out on the word of God. And yes, everything may not go right. I may buy some stock and it might lose a little money, but I'm stepping out. I'm trying. I, I'm trying everything. I'm trying to get seven streams of income. I'm stepping out. You can laugh at me if you want to, but I'm stepping out. I'm going out there. And every now and then I get afraid and lose my balance, but I can cry out, Lord, save me. Save this bald-headed, bearded preacher. Save, save Deliverance Temple. Save Muncie, Indiana. Save my country. Save, save, save my world. God, save us, Lord, because I'm still close enough to call out to you. And what I love about Peter, Peter was bold enough to step out. I like that. And, of course, Peter got distracted. We don't like that. But what I love is the scripture says, Beginning to sink, he cried out. He didn't wait till he was down, all the way down by the sea moss to start saying, oh, by the way, I probably should need, need some help, God. No, as soon as he began to sink, he cried out. That, that leads me to point number three. Sub point number three, under your balance, Jesus being our balance, crying for the Lord's help at the beginning is a key to regaining balance. Any of you guys ever watch the Olympics and or or some type of gymnast thing and you see people on a, a tight rope and then they, they start wobbling, but somehow their leg muscles remember all the training and they stabilize and they're able to move. See, when you cry out to the Lord, when you get in certain situations, you know you can't turn to anybody but God. And so you cry out to him and you regain your balance. So uh, David said, my foot almost slipped. Not, not that I slipped. It almost slipped. Yeah, you may have almost slipped and almost sank. See, see, Peter was sinking, but he never sank. 
See, you may have been falling, but you have never failed because God has been right there. And as long as you can call on his name, you're close enough for him to reach down and grab you. He was there all the time. He's been there all the time. He, he, he's close enough to pick you up, cradle you in his arms, and help you regain your balance. All right, let's, let's go to Matthew 14, 31. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Same thing I'm just sharing with you. And said to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Well, I just gave you the answer. He doubted because he got in fear. And fear resulted, uh, uh, fear resulted in doubt. But what that lets us know is that the key to him keeping his balance is staying in faith. That's why the fight is over your faith because uh, Satan wants you to lose your balance. So sub point number four is faith keeps us in balance. Say that with me. Faith keeps me in balance. All right. Next verse. Psalms 94, 18. When I said, my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. As soon as I cried out and said, I'm slipping, not that I have slipped, but I am slipping or starting to slip. I'm starting to lose grasp. I'm starting to lose faith and get in fear. When I said that, your unfailing love, it supported me. And that brings us to our final Point, which is C, your support. So our footing is our cornerstone, our balance, and our support. Jesus is our cornerstone. Jesus is our balance. And conversely, Jesus is our support. Let's look at Psalms 94, 18 again. We're going to read that again with the understanding of where we're headed. When I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. That's why we communicate Christ's love compassionately because in his love is what we call a support system. You will not make it in this life if you don't have a support system, somebody to love you and support you. And when you can't find love in human beings and family members let you down and co-workers let you down and spouses and boyfriends and girlfriends let you down and even people in authority like pastors and leaders let you down, I'm here to let you know you have the support of the Lord. Not only is he your cornerstone and your balance, he is your Support. You do not have to slip. You do not have to fall because his love will sustain you. All right, let's look at Psalms 20 and 2. It says, may he send you help from, hold on, let me read that again. May he send you help from heaven. No, that's, that ain't what it says. Let, let, me, let me focus in. Maybe my, my, my video guys are, met, are playing with me. Let me see if I can read this correctly. Put, put it solid. Maybe I'm messing something up. Make it solid for me. May he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. Oh, I got it. I got it. I understand. God, I get what you're saying. I see it. I see it. I got it. I got it. Here, here, here's the connotation. You're in Zion. You're in heaven. But you're going to send support from the sanctuary. That, that, that means there's going to be people in the building that are going to provide the support. In other words, you're going to send the support from heaven, but it's going to come through folk in the sanctuary. So that means my pew mates are going to be my support. As long as they're anchored to God, Jesus is going to work through them to be my support. So there is a whole support system in church. People think church is for nothing. No, church is more than just having a good service. It is an entire support system. 
like we all understand that we've gone through a season that was difficult and challenging. I believe we're rounding that season. But those who were sick, if they didn't have the support of the prayers of the righteous. It might have been too much for them. But the church, the sanctuary, is a support system. If that sanctuary is anchored to Jesus, then they become an entire support system. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. Let, let me shift a little bit and talk about leadership and talk about me as a leader. What I'm supposed to do is, is provide support. Yes, I've got to discipline the unruly. I've got to deal with the feeble-minded. But when you are anchored, but you're weak, you, you got your balance but you're getting weak. Life is coming at your heart. It's my job to support the weak. If you have a weak family member, you support the weak family member. You, you, you don't let them go down. You, you, you support them. And as your leader, it's my job to support you. But it's also my job to raise up members who are support systems. That you pray for each other. That you really love each other. That you really live your vision every day. You really love each other to provide the support that the people need. Nobody should be weak by themselves. Nobody should waste away and miss out on heaven from this church because somebody should support them. And as a leader, it's my job to teach you that. It's my job not to kick you when you're down. Sometimes church folk will kick you when you're down. But as your pastor, I'm not here to kick you when you're down. I'm here to get up under you and help you carry that load, support you when you're weak, and be patient toward all men. So let, let's look at this, Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. I'm going to give you pastors after my heart. So when God gives you a pastor out of his heart, there are a whole bunch of people starting churches. There's a whole bunch of people pastoring. But how you know you have a pastor after God's own heart is how they handle you and how they support you. And I'm going to show you the job of a real pastor. I'm going to show you what my job is. I'm going to put it up on the screen as we close. These will be the sub points under support. My job to you is, is A, I must be a feeder. In order to be a feeder, I've got to be a reader, but I've got to feed you. I have to be a feeder. I've got to spend the time. I've got to do the study so that I can feed you. You should never come to church starving and leave starving. Do you know some people go to church dead and they leave dead? There's no life there's no food. There's no source because those people got everything on their mind but the anchor, which is Jesus. Not this pastor. I know better. My job is to be a feeder. That's why sometimes I say, pastor, preach this word. And sometimes I say, pastor, feed me this word. I'm supposed to be a feeder first and then a leader. A feeder and then a leader. I got to have people to follow me. Come on, follow me. I got to be doing what I need to do. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Come on, follow me. I got I, I, I to gotta take you around to follow me. And we, we got a camera now that has enough tech savvy to literally follow me. So watch, as I move, the camera moves. If I go over here, the camera goes over here. If I go over there, the camera goes over there. Well, what the camera has to do, it has to see me in order to follow me. So if you see me failing, you're going to follow me into failure. So it's my job not to fail. It's my job to have my sure foundation, have my footing sure, because I got to feed you, but I also have to lead you. Follow me as I follow Christ. Come on, follow me. I'm going to scoop back. Follow me. 
I'm going to go forward. Follow me. I'm going to go over here. Follow me. It's my job to be a leader and say, follow me. I shared with Sister Ruby that the hurting thing for me was the fact that we had so many people sick. That just hurt me as a pastor, as a leader. That hurt me because when you're in pain, I'm in pain. I tested negative, but I still was in pain. I didn't have the physical pain you had, but I had the spiritual pain because my babies are hurting. You, 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 you're the people God has given to me. Some of you don't even live in the city. You live elsewhere, but you tune in online. I, I, I father you. I hover over you because that's my job to be a feeder and a leader. And the last one, we'll put that graphic back up, a interceder. My job to be the go-between for you, to stand in the gap for you. It's my job to be a feeder, a leader, and a interceder. A feeder, a leader, and a interceder. A feeder, a leader, and an interceder. When it comes to intercession, I'm reminded of football season and interception where when the enemy or the opposing team is trying to score, sometimes an interception is made and they go the other way. When the devil is trying to throw death at your door, it's my job to get in there and intercede and have intercession and intercept. Those things from landing in your life and landing at your doorstep. Now, if you're not anchored and to, to the cornerstone and you're not being balanced by faith, it's, it's hard for me to do it. But if you've done all those things, I can help be your support in the sanctuary. God is your support in heaven. I can help be your support in the sanctuary. But, but here's the question as we close. That's what the pastor's job is. What is my job as a member? Let's put this up. Members' jobs, they have to be eaters, followers, and interceders. You have to be an eater, a follower, and an interceder. You have to eat what I'm feeding. You have to follow where I'm leading. So I feed, you eat. I lead, you follow. But we both can intercede. Because when I intercede for you, you intercede for somebody else. When I stand in the gap for you, you stand in the gap for someone else. Not only am I standing in the gap for you, but sometimes it is you standing in the gap for me. At this time, the whole church and actually all across the country, we're standing in the gap for our overseer. Believe in God. And we've already started to see miracle things happen in my father's life. And I'm not saying this is something we said. The medical professional just yesterday came in the room and said all his levels are turning around and stabilizing and reversing. This must be a miracle. We didn't call it a miracle. They are calling it a miracle because we've been standing in the gap for our leader. So... Your leader must feed you to support you. He must lead you to support you. He's got to intercede to support you. But for you to support, you have to eat what is being fed. You have to follow where it's being led, and you have to join in with the intercession. And so what that does for us, that causes us to never lose our footing. So I'll say it again. Don't lose your footing. I'm going to say it three times. Don't lose your footing for the second time. And finally, for the third time, don't lose your footing. But I want you to make this declaration with me based on the cornerstone, based on the balance, and based on the support. I won't lose my footing. I want to say it again. Based on the cornerstone, Based on the balance and based on the support, I won't lose my footing. I'm going to do it one more time, and you can go ahead and put the camera on me so I can look at them squarely in the face. Based on the cornerstone, which is Jesus, and based on the balance, which is our faith in Jesus, 
And based on our support, which comes from heaven as well as in the sanctuary, I can boldly declare, I won't lose my footing. You won't lose your footing. You won't lose your focus. You won't lose your fight. And you won't lose your footing. You're going to stand strong. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. You're going to stand in praise. You're going to stand in blessing. You're going to stand in healing. You're going to stand in joy. And ultimately, you're going to stand in heaven. And more ultimately than that, you're going to stand before your master and before your king. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you and honor you. And we lift you up. You are the sure foundation on which we stand. You're the solid rock on which we stand. You are the anchor that we are anchored to. You are our everything. You provide us with the cornerstone so we don't lose our footing. You provide us with balance so we don't lose our footing. And you provide us with support so we don't lose our footing. Now, Father God, I am praying that you would keep us, even when we don't want to be kept, you will lift us up every time we fall down and you will mount guard for us and be our rear guard and be our reward. Now, God, if there's anybody who doesn't know you and your son as the savior of their life and the savior of the universe, I ask that they would just pray this prayer. Father God, come into my heart. Send your son's spirit to live in me so I'll never lose my focus. I'll never lose my fight, and I'll never lose my footing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. We will see you next week. We will actually be back in the building next week, September 26th. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Goodbye.